We discovered early, and I'm talking about more than 45 years ago, that the audience wants to bring a visual to the audio experience. In the light show, what we try to do is provide a non-specific, non-programmed set of visuals, and the audience all see their own light show. We are much more in the world of art rather than the world of music. We provide a background that is more like a frame, and that's what we're doing at Skirball. We're kind of the host, we're the frame. Way back, what was then the Lower East Side and Greenwich Village were hotbeds of, among other things, hotbeds of music, and new music especially. It transitioned from a folk neighborhood to a rock neighborhood. Jimi Hendrix was discovered here. Uh, the Mothers of Invention were playing here. It was long before the Fillmore, but we began to do light shows based on what they've been doing very successfully in San Francisco. I remember when we began, uh, the very first time we did it, it was a success with the audience. What happened was, you have to keep in mind that there was nothing. Prior to that, a band would come out, that maybe there'd be two follow spots and a black curtain. All of a sudden, there's a visual that's as powerful and as strong as the music they're playing. As the music got better, we got better. So it, it was one of those things where the audience loved us right away. The Fillmore East specifically was a, a unique space at the time. Uh, it had been a Yiddish theater, uh, then it had been a movie theater, uh, then it was called uh, the Village Theater, and, and people were starting to put rock um, shows on there before Bill came and turned it into the Fillmore. The great moment at the Fillmore was in 1969, the Who had come out with a concept album called Tommy. And they were performing it. Everybody had to come. You could not get a ticket. And the Fillmore was big, almost 3,000 seats, but you couldn't get a ticket. Greenwich Village, and in a somewhat different way, the Lower East Side, were what I call culture engines. Places that attract creative people, bring them together into relatively small spaces where they bounce ideas off each other, and they create, generate tremendous amounts of, of art and culture for everybody else. Greenwich Village on one side and the Lower East Side on the other were like two hemispheres of a great cultural brain that was operating down here in the 1800s and 1900s. And there's a great, rich legacy here of, of art across the boards. It goes from minstrel shows to punk rock music, to off-off Broadway, to people who went to Hollywood, people who went to Broadway. Abstract expressionism was born here. The beats were here. There's a tremendous amount going on here. Because the village was this different place that attracted misfits from all over, it also was a hotbed and an epicenter for various countercultural movements going way back, going back in, into the 1800s. This is where you came if you felt like you were going to um, be a little different, be a bohemian, uh, be beat. So much culture was created here in Greenwich Village, so it's really good and really important to at least remember the legacy and the history and uh, to recreate it in some ways, um, like with the Joshua Light Show. Today when the audience comes to the Skirball Center, they can expect a high visual experience that is on the same level as the music. It's very much about being there in the moment, connecting with the bands. We do visual, they do sound. We're very proud of the fact that our road boxes are, some of them are older than some of the people in the light show. But then we open them up and out comes all of this stuff which looks like garbage until we assemble it and then it makes beautiful, beautiful light.